we will talk about two important applications of antiferromagnets. Uh, the first one is exchange bias and the second one is uh, colossal magnetoresistance. So exchange bias is a phenomenon that occurs in ferromagnet, antiferromagnet, bilayer thin films uh, or nanoparticles. As you can see here, we have a core shell structure, uh, cobalt, cobalt monoxide, where cobalt monoxide is an antiferromagnet and cobalt is a ferromagnet. <coughs> so this is uh, true for temperatures below 293 Kelvin. So uh, in ferromagnet FM anti-ferromagnet AFM bilayer thin films the exchange coupling between ferromagnet and antiferromagnet spins at the interface can be used to make the ferromagnetic film magnetically harder so this is the application to make a ferromagnetic thin film magnetically harder this effect is known as exchange bias or exchange anisotropy because it's a unidirectional uh, anisotropy so this is unidirectional not uniaxial unidirectional in nature so if you consider a cobalt uh, cobalt oxide nanoparticle so the nail temperature of cobalt monoxide is 293 kelvin so first uh, we are uh, above the nail temperature of uh, cobalt monoxide but below the, uh, the curie temperature of the ferromagnet you can see that the antiferromagnetic moments are uh, have become a para uh, they, they are basically paramagnetic and due to the exchange at the interface between the ferromagnet and the antiferromagnetic spins uh, we will have, uh, if you apply a magnetic field H, so this is our uh, cooling field. So if I, field, if I apply a magnetic field H to the right and apply cooling in the presence of this field below the nail temperature, what happens is because of the um, exchange coupling at the interface, you can see that uh, these... Uh, the the spins at the interface will be coupled uh, so as a result if I cool down below the nail temperature in the presence of the field uh, I obtain the structure and then if I take a hysteresis loop uh, of this uh, structure what I see is that uh, I have uh, the, a shift in the hysteresis loop that is opposite in direction to the field cooling direction. So this is uh, the shift, uh, shift direction. And this is the field cooling direction. So uh, the system wants to keep its uh, magnetization basically uh, in the field cooling direction when we have to apply a very large field in order to uh, rotate the ferromagnet uh, moments uh, to be in the opposite direction um, and because the the motion 
the rotation of the spins at the interface uh, with the antiferromagnet are impeded is basically impeded by the exchange strong exchange coupling at that interface and it takes a uh, very little field to go back to the uh, field cooling direction so so that we see a shifted hysteresis loop as well as uh, an enhancement in the coercivity so um, we call this uh, field the uh, exchange bias field hx and uh, the width of the loop is increasing so the coercivity uh, this is uh, going to be hc1 hc2 uh, the coercivity will also increase so uh, as a result of uh, field cooling Uh, exchange bias leads to uh, three important consequences. One, enhanced coercivity. Two, enhanced loop width. So that's uh, basically delta HC, which is HC2 minus HC1 absolute value. And uh, we see a hysteresis loop shift. Or offset. So we measure the exchange bias field as uh, HC1 plus HC2 divided by 2 so it's going to be the midfield in the in the middle of the hysteresis loop so the uh, the effect is that uh, initially uh, before doing the field cooling uh, we have a symmetric hysteresis loop so this is what we see initially um, and then it shifts and it gets wider as a result of exchange bias so this is uh, soft and now here it becomes harder so it, the material becomes magnetically harder so uh, we can say that the exchange bias effectively the direction of magnetization of the ferromagnetic layer by introducing a unidirectional anisotropy so that is the result of exchange bias now uh, one last application that I would like to mention uh, there are some special materials in the perovskite structure like cal lanthanum calcium manganese oxide where we can see antiferromagnetic to ferromagnetic transitions by application of a field and if the antiferromagnetic phase is the insulator and ferromagnetic phase is a conductor, this results in a huge change in the resistivity, making them good candidates for magnetic field sensors. So in some materials with perovskite, structure so perovskite structure has a formula abo3 so o is oxygen so uh, two elements abo3 and this goes through a transition from antiferromagnetic 
So ferromagnetic. These are possible with applied field. So the antiferromagnetic phase is an insulator. The ferromagnetic phase is a conductor. So what we see is that uh, delta rho can be huge. Uh, therefore, good the change in resistivity can be huge therefore good candidates for magnetic field sensors magnetic field uh, sensor applications why because we have a, a very big um, signal to noise ratio however uh, initially the experiments were performed at low temperature now uh, example is lanthanum calcium manganese oxide um, now there are also materials that uh, display this behavior close to room temperature however uh, the effect requires very large uh, fields making them uh, not so practical for applications so the the, the problem is what was uh, the temperature low temperature initially but it's more like the uh, amount of magnetic field required in order to observe this effect. Okay, so uh, in summary, we talked about two applications of antiferromagnets. Exchange bias is a unidirectional anisotropy that is induced on a ferromagnetic layer that is in contact with an antiferromagnetic layer. So it's obtained by cooling uh, the bilayer system below the nail temperature in the presence of a field uh, and uh, as a result of this there is a hysteresis loop shift enhanced coercivity uh, and uh, we see um, enhanced loop width so uh, this is quite useful in order to make the ferromagnetic thin films magnetically harder it finds applications in uh, spin valve structures in uh, magnetic uh, field sensors, readers, basically, in hard disk drives, for example. The colossal magnetoresistance uh, is an effect that occurs in uh, some materials that have perovskite structure, ABO3 structure. Antiferromagnetic phase is insulator, ferromagnetic phase is conductor, and uh, the transition is induced by application of a large magnetic field. There is a huge change in resistivity, so it it would be a good candidate for a, a magnetic field sensor however the effect requires large magnetic fields uh, and some of the materials require low temperatures as well so it's not very practical at the moment